Guys, good Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk with Keith Smith. Thank you kindly for joining us. We are live in downtown Charlottesville, our studio in the Macklin Building, our audience, Central Virginia-wide, Commonwealth-wide, countrywide, and worldwide on the I Love Seville Network. The show presented on a Wednesday by Ross Mortgage and Scott Morris. Good the guy, morning. smart man, knows what he's talking about. Keith Smith on his way from a car board meeting. We'll be here in a matter of minutes. Judah, let's go to the two shot. Judah Wickhauer is our director. If you want to use the studio camera, that'd be great as well. We appreciate you considerably, Judah, here on the talk show. Scott, good morning, my friend. Hey, good morning, Jerry. What's going on, dude? Uh, it's going well. Um, a week over a week, my friend. What have you been following? So week over week, uh, well, what we're seeing is uh, the Fed is, there's a Jackson Hole meeting this, this week, which is kind of like an extra Fed meeting, and uh, everyone's projected to see a more hawkish Fed saying that they're going to continue on the rise in interest rates, uh, and we're seeing the bond market uh, react negatively to that, and more importantly, we're seeing the mortgage-backed security market react even more negatively, um, because I think they actually have bought into the fact that uh, things are going up, and there's going, with what Ford just did with the 3,000 executives and contractors they're, they're letting go, uh, the jobless numbers across the board um, are going to have a negative impact on uh, uh, foreclosures potentially. Uh, so there is some tightening uh, in the on the mortgage end. So we're going to see some higher rates. So right in line with uh, when you see a bunch of Facebook posts about rates are at you know hey everybody rates are super super low, and then by the time that's posted, uh, the whole world shifts. Um, that was a good first take. Juan uh, Saraminto, welcome to the program. Questions and comments for Scott, put them in the feed. I'll relay them live on air. I have two in the can for Scott already um, waiting. I'm going to get to some questions that I have first. John Blair and Stanton, hello. Welcome to the program. Um, you bring up the jobs, and, and you bring up the layoffs, and you bring up the contractions. I mean, Apple's um, letting go of recruiters who do hiring. Um, I'm starting to worry about that a little bit. Can we go down that, that hole? Sure, but I mean, we're looking at, again, uh, let's call it the frothy side of uh, these businesses. Um, that's what they're cutting. They're, call, they're cutting. You're saying they're too fat. Yeah. Um, th th where, you know, there was all this money out there so they could afford to, like, pack on and, and, and try to take the extra scoop of the ice cream. But now they know that there is there are tightening conditions coming coming and in to deal with that they're going to execute to make themselves more streamlined going forward first time i've heard especially early in the show in kind of an opening take the uh, foreclosure word uh, you well, see an uptick in there i'm not there's certainly starting to be more activity but we're not there yet um, and i think part of uh, what we're seeing is uh, before, before there's more loans laid out there, uh, you're, the in investors are starting to hedge against that. I think that's what we're beginning to see. How about your book of business based on um, kind of a pocket of geography? Central Virginia, Richmond, Roanoke, North Again, Carolina. I'm speaking more na nationally on that. Um, I, I truly believe we are in a more insulated area. Um, the university. Lynchburg has Liberty. Um, maybe when you get further down in Roanoke where you've got a, a more manufacturing uh, than you do here, um, government contracting here, um, a lot of what drives our commerce, our, our employment, isn't so directly tied to uh, what we're seeing, where we're seeing the layoffs. Um, Scott Morris, questions coming in. The, the rate questions, the one that gets most commonly put in here. Um, we saw them, didn't they tick down? They did, they did. And then in the last uh, day and a half, two days, um, you're, uh, there's been a, they're spiking back up. Rates guys are moving. Um, what do you, how's the book of business from um, applications coming down the pipe? Applications have been have been steady. Um, it's about getting people under contract. Um, still, the problem, at least in this area, this area of Richmond, uh, Northern Virginia, Roanoke, uh, is still very competitive, and a lot of the so a lot of the same things. So we're starting to see more days on market, but a lot of that's coming from properties that either have a ton of deferred maintenance and need a lot of love, um, and you know somebody you know they think they're interested in it until they get there, and they're like, sheesh, this is a lot of work, or properties that people. Um, 
had maybe unrealistic expectations for, they're priced a little higher than they should be, um, so there's not the level of interest or activity. So those you're seeing run 30, 45, 60 days on market, um, but if it's a prime property and it's priced right by the seller agent, then you know a listing agent, you're, you're gonna be, uh, you know, it's under contract in less than a week. So that's, that's where you're seeing that, that average uh, of 10 days come from. It's not coming from uh, the, the, the prime property is, is gone in less than five days. Your, your other properties are running longer days on market. That's a good uh, sizzle reel right there, Judah Wickhauer. Contract cancellations has come in as a question for you. I haven't seen a lot of it. Um, so I, our fallout is typically less than 20%, and lately it's been uh, less than 10%. And uh, that's not, you know, it's out there. It's, it's, and again, I think it's, it, from what I hear from other agent, like agents and other professionals uh, on my end, is it's more about people who get into a property that's got a lot of problems that, uh, where they're having home contingencies, uh, where they're having home inspection contingencies that they can apply now, whereas they couldn't before. How do you characterize the, uh, the nature of, of the market? Balanced? We have balanced yet? We're, we're trying to get there. Yeah, but, still uh, sellers? Uh, still, uh, sellers if advantage. A, if it's the if the property's clean, it's going to have a lot of people that are going to have a lot of interest. I think we're going to see we'll we'll see how high we run up um, rate related in the next fifteen days to see what kind of effect that's going to have. Um, the another question you get this one often. Um, what's the expectation from Scott with what Powell and the Fed are going to do from a rate increase? Grayson, thank you. Uh, it's going to be a more hawkish. Uh, I think that's what we're gonna, you're going to get a more uh, guarded version. Now, one of the things that's that's being talked about is uh, uh, not the prime, but uh, bank to bank uh, lending, where they there's some people uh, in the Fed sphere there that uh, feel that that should have been increased uh, 100 basis points uh, and wasn't. So that's that's not the prime rate. That's like uh, what the cost for banks to borrow from the Fed. They're trying to increase that rate. So that's really where you're going to see some increase. Um, and, and that'll trickle down to consumers over time as well. David Wright, giving you props. Welcome to the program. Questions for Scott, put them in the feed, relay them live on air. Um, interesting one. We touch on this on the I Love Siebel show from time to time. What's up, Dave, by the way? Um, this, David, we love you. I'm not sure who you are, but you're a friend of Scott, you're a friend of mine. Um, this question has come up for Scott. We talk on this on the I Love Sebo show. Jerry talks about a lot of businesses being for sale. The Scott Sias correlation with rates rising and those businesses hitting the market. That's a good one. That's a good one, Jerry. You want to take that one? I mean, I, I think the, uh, the debt service these guys have has become less manageable. Um, and I think it happened at the same time with um, you know, the labor issues and the cost of goods increasing. The and labor I, issues haven't stopped. Haven't stopped. I mean, they're just getting hammered like left and right. And I think people are just piecing out because they're tired. And I don't blame them. I'm I mean, a Taco Bell fan. And I tried going to Taco Bell, uh, two different locations on Route 15 mm -hmm. the other day on a trip back uh, from- Close? No, not close. The, the lobby's closed. And I'm like towing a trailer with a four wheeler on it. And I'm like yelling at the window, can I, can I walk up and order? And there, it's, turned, it's like a whole thing, bro. It's I mean, crazy. Waffle House is closed. Closed? Fifth Street Station, Waffle House. Can't have, a, don't have enough labor. They had to shut it down. The one on 29 is still open. The labor issue has not solved itself, like you said. That's crazy. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a tough How spot. do you, how, so if you don't have, what happens if we have a national emergency and there's not enough labor for Waffle House, how do we follow the Waffle House, House Index well, in, times of, in times of crisis? You know, he, he jokes, but the Waffle House Index is a real index. It's a real index. You, yes. you want to tell him what it's about? So if, uh, basically, if there's a hurricane or some... Uh, this is true, guys. Like uh, some... Nat uh, natural disaster that comes through and devastates an area uh, to know who's got power and how things are working it it monitor and this is and this is how the government and uh, first responders FEMA, FEMA track yeah. where things are is what waffle houses are open tell you how bad the damage is in different areas he's totally right why don't we just for fun and 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 you know what let's turn this into a sizzle reel I think people appreciate this the waffle not house as much index. as I appreciate waffle house I, by the way. I love waffle house I love waffle house is it informal metric named after the Waffle House that I'm reading um, from, from the interwebs, um, and it determines the effect of a storm and the likely scale of assistance required for disaster recovery. 
FEMA legitimately uses the Waffle House Index to assess storm damage. Look at the big brain on Brad. Did you I mean, see that? Unbelievable. Basically the same explanation. Scott Morris knows what's up right here on the uh, Real Talk with, with Keith Smith talk show. All right, so throw, throw this to you here. We're positive guys. What is something positive we can put out there in the news cycle and the narrative about what you're seeing at your desk and, and your book of business here? Do you have some positive for us? Are yeah. we still, is the positive uncertain? I don't, I don't think I'm doomsday here. No, I, I don't think, think yeah. you are at all. I think no. this is, uh, we're, we're, going, we're, we're going through a phase. And uh, part of that is, part of that's tied to a lot of uncertainty people and uh, big institutional money gambling with uh, the futures of the American people. Like, that's what this, you know, uh, they don't know um, how drastically uh, things are going to affect each individual that with what they're doing with rates at the moment, they, they're they're gambling on a, a conversation that hasn't even been had that's coming Friday. Um, so that's what we're seeing. Uh, so I think if you if you're out there, and I say this every week, and I, and I earnestly mean it, if you are making a decision based on the needs of your family, talk to your trusted advisors, come up with a plan, put things in place that are going to put you in the best position to succeed. And if we're if, if you're comfortable with a payment that I, that's being quoted to you that's uh, at a uh, high X number, knowing that in 12 to 24 months we're going to refinance this loan for you anyways and get you in a better position, then go do what you need to do to, to put a roof over your head, to be in a comfortable position, to separate from an individual or help a, a, a family who's gone through a, a death and, and, and execute whatever that is, and then we'll... And then in the future, we'll work with you to lower the rate through a refinance. Ray Cadell, if rates are up, Scott, and prices are up, inventory stays down, what is the answer for the first time home buyer who I believe drive what the real estate calls the ladder up move? Specifically for Scott from Ray Cadell, Sizzle Real This. Your thoughts on that? So I think that's been an ongoing problem and uh, one that's been you know difficult to deal with. But the answer there is, again, what does your situation look like? Are we talking now for Ray's question? Are we talking about move up? Is that or are we talking about first time buyer? I think kind of the same. The same, yeah. The first right. time home buyer, yeah. So, first time home buyer, uh, the focus needs to be um, where can we find inventory that's going to match what you're looking for, and as rates go up, we're going to see some. S- some slowing of qualified purchasers and we're going to see more inventory over time come on board. Prime properties are always going to go first, but these ones that are unrealistically listed, that's where we see our price reductions and we see more opportunity come. You're also seeing less investor interest as higher interest rates go, which gives room for the first time buyer to get on board. Does the first time home buyer have an easier path to purchase now? It depends on who you are as a first-time buyer. It's definitely where it's becoming more difficult for certain income levels to find an entry point, but with less competition from investors and as the price, I think we are going to see the price point shift down or we're at least a slow in the acceleration of the you know, the appreciation that we've seen. Um, you're going to see some... The, the people who can buy at three to three fifty um, and still qualified, it's going to be easier for them to get in the door. Call Peppers in the house with uh, Japresha Terrell Clark. Pre, what's up? How are you, Miss? She's watching the program right now. Here's a good question for you. Um, this is from Lauren watching the show, and she says he talks about refinancing as rates go down and getting in a house now. How easy is it to refinance, and what's the time of window that you should wait before refinancing it to make it worth your time and money? I mean, you probably want to be in the house for, uh, you know, six to seven months uh, at least before you refinance. Um, But that's not to say that uh, that's not like a rule. Um, And depending on the loan program as well, there's a lot. So if it's if you're a veteran and you're VA, you're going to have the opportunity to use something called an EARL, which is an interest rate refinance loan. uh, That's that's a limited documentation, assuming that you've been making your payments, uh, that we can go in and uh, lower the rate just it, it's a it's a faster easier transaction um 
if you're somebody who uh, was credit challenged going in and maybe you FA, you purchased FHA um, and then we could switch you to conventional as your credit situation has improved uh, and get you uh, lower mortgage insurance and uh, better terms, you'd have even a, a lower payment at a lower rate than you were originally at to begin with. Well said. Our buy downs, Ray, our buy downs of graduated payment products in our near future, Scott. So they're already out there. Um, the only way that they explain make what that means. So, so it's a little gimmicky, um, and the reason that I say that is the people who go into them are almost certainly going to refi that loan no matter what. Um, and the the what makes them gimmicky is to make them really beneficial. You're using a a lender credit, uh, a seller credit. You're using money from the seller that you want to get in anyways to apply to those points for these buy down programs. But if you were to go in at the best rate that you could possibly qualify for and just get a reduction in the uh, the price, you're you're about break even either way. So uh, you could save ten thousand dollars, or you could get the seller to, if they're given the concession of ten thousand, apply it in that direction. I, I've, there's a lot of takes on this. I look through like uh, different uh, mortgage groups and boards and conversations. I think it's gimmicky. Um, it's out there. It 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 can make people feel good. It's a marketing tool more than anything else. Um, this is a good question for you. Um, are the closing costs the same for the families that are refinancing after locking in a higher rate and then dropping to a lower rate? Are the same closing costs as what they had at closing for the first time? Um, you're you're going to be. It's a little bit lower. It's a pro, you know. Uh, you're you're. We use three percent as a guideline. You're probably going to be closer to two and a half percent, depending on depending on your situation. There's a lot of things that can affect that. Very nice. Um, Judah Wickhauer, go to the studio camera. We'll welcome Keith Smith to Real Talk, fresh from a car board meeting. How was the mood at Car in Hillsdale? Uh, it was a very productive meeting. Um, it's it's budget season for cars, so lots of numbers, lots of lots of stuff uh, to do that. So it was uh, uh, there's a lot of treasurer conversation. So it was good, but this is the time of the year that we set next year's budgets and dues and stuff like that. How's so. the um, so agents now watching on the program? Hey. Um, how was the uh, the temperature with with sales um, slowing? Uh, so none of that came up. This okay. was this was very uh, numbers oriented meeting, right? You know, we're we're trying to set budgets for next year. So that's really what what we were tackling. You know, the jurisdictions already done it, right? They've done that uh, already. So so our car is a for profit, so their budgets get set at the end of the year for for next year. So we're starting the budget budget process which is always exciting yay what uh i know budget time good night what data are you watching man a lot of data's hit in the last two or three days Keith. yeah you know um the data i've been hitting is my phone's been ringing off the hook so uh, <clears throat> we've been extremely busy uh, particularly with listings i think we've got three or four more listings coming on which is which is great news uh but yeah you know i i we talked about this on Monday, and maybe Scott has is starting to see this, and maybe since I'm late, this may have already came up. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm starting to see the emotional part of this starting to stabilize. Right, sellers are starting to realize, hey, you know, I can put my house on the market because maybe I can buy something, right? Uh, so that's a lot of the conversation we've been having with <clears throat> with sellers, and then buyers. You know, instead of competing against a thousand other people, it's maybe one or two, and uh, there seems to be a little bit of, um, you know, normalcy. That's the right choice. What are you seeing, Scott? Do you agree? Same, yeah. Um, and, but again, I think that is can be property dependent. Um, if it is, yeah. uh, if it's really choice, like it's like, wow, this place is so nice. This is the right right price point. You're still going to be multiple offers there. Um, if it's if it's a little, uh, if you've got somebody who's sticking it to the top of the board and hoping that they've got some interest, um, or if it has uh, some deferred maintenance issues, the roof. There's some. If there's anything that can kind of make it a uh, not so. Uh, if it doesn't seem like an opportunity, then it's probably going to be able to be there a little longer. So on Monday, we were looking at that. We focused on Charlottesville on Monday and some of the actives. And I don't have the exact data in front of me, so I don't want to misquote it. But you were starting to see um, some uh, lower price point and higher price point homes in the city of Charlottesville. Um, uh, you know, 
30, 40, you know, something like that. That, that you, That's the bell. Yeah, that's what. I, so basically, if, it, if, it's, if it's got a lot of problems, yeah. more days on market. If it's overpriced, more <coughs> days on market. Your choice is in that. Uh, it's, it's off market in five days. We've been, we've been talking about this for years, right? It's five things, right? Location, price, features, conditions, and timing. And location can be one side of the street to the other side of the street. And that's kind of normal. <clears throat> um, features and conditions are really impacting it a lot so right the, now. So the conditions, so when we look at these, what we're not seeing, or at least we're seeing less of, and this is indicative of that, is uh, some of these things, I mean, we saw some real just POS properties that were scooped up by investors <laughs> like right away. And now there's not an appetite for that as much. So it's, it's sitting for longer. And because if it the first time buyer, they can't, you know, they're going to have a trouble getting into that because they can't afford to take on the expense of, yeah. of turning all this around. But, but what about five? I always get that. Two or three K. Thank you. That's absolutely an opportunity. And it's something that, uh, you know, I've got uh, HUD consultants and uh, contractors who are ready to go. Um, on the, the So properties. talk about that. I've got a buyer okay. <clears throat> right there's a, Two hundred sixty, two hundred and eighty thousand dollar home available downtown Charlotte, you know, somewhere in Charlottesville, single family, detached. Mm -hmm. On that end of it, it clearly needs a ton of. Work. Let's say it needs. Uh, so let's let's call it. Uh, 100, let's say, let's say it's on, on market for uh, three hundred thousand. It needs one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of work. Um, we get uh, a, a, a agreed to buy at three hundred. Um, we have a HUD consultant and the contractor go out together. They separate their bid into uh, labor and materials so that they can have a draw schedule. Uh, we do a 45-day close instead of a 30-day close, and uh, the seller receives everything and closes like a normal transaction, and then uh, the contractor has six months to complete the work. Do they get with, draws through the process? With, a, with up to a five-draw process, and... Uh, the initial, some of the initial work, uh, like permits need to go get pulled. Um, there needs to be some demo and some level. The uh, contractor or the borrower will probably come out of pocket for a little bit to get an initial round of materials and, and some work done so that the HUD consultant can come back, inspect, and show that they can move to the, the first draw and move forward. Um, they can get an extension on the six months for the work if, you know, they run into uh, like a they supply can't get chain. Stuff. Yes, like they can't. <laughs> Now, that's a problem that we're starting to see come into correct. Home Depot, for example, has a 2.5 million square foot warehouse that they built in Arizona. And what they have found, or uh, what they're seeing is that uh, they over-ordered for all of this demand, and you're starting to see that demand shrink a little bit. So some of those supply chain problems when it comes to appliances and some of these other items are starting to ease and go yeah, away. That's, I mean, that's showing inflation's peaked. I mean, that's a sign of inflation peaking. That, um, and, and, and oftentimes, they crap out housing first by raising the rates, and then everything associated with housing, the appliances, the labor, all that other stuff, starts to pick up and to starts gaining momentum that again. Was, <coughs> that was done intentionally. That was done intentionally. The appliances are coming back now yeah. in, the, in, the, in the big box stores. But. It was done intentionally. But. You need to get it delivered the last mile. You and this goes back to the labor shortage that we're still facing. Yeah, right there, yeah, so that's, that's true. Difference. That's true right now, there. Now I need, I, I have a, a, a closing that we did that, that was part of a home, home shield, um, home warranty program. And it's just a simple repair on a dishwasher that we're three months still trying to get a repair person in there. Uh, it's one of these home Dude, I got a Samsung refrigerator um, that stopped, like, it still freezes, but the top stopped being cool. And uh, I called a repair guy and literally over the phone basically said, look, um, if, if it's a oh, Samsung, a just, he's like, dude, I'll come out and fix it. It's going to be broken again in five weeks. Just go buy another. Just, like, stay away from the brand. It's trash. Yeah. yeah, it's like he's like I can come charge you the money, but just you appreciated that. Though, oh, right? a thousand percent. Like right. that's how. Yeah, I, that's, that's how I want that. That's I, I want the frankness in every transaction yeah. to be like that. So yeah. I was excited today talking to you about this two hundred three program because looking up was available in Charlottesville. You know, one can get excited, right? Because you see, oh, there's a couple of three hundred thousand a dollar or three hundred thousand dollar under single family detached. 
They're all small, by the way, you know, 800 square feet, that kind sure. of thing. <clears throat> but I was excited about talking to you about that because if I have a first-time home buyer that wants to do this and, and has the runway to do it, time to do it, um, you, know, you know, what does that process look like? So thank you for, Absolutely. for talk, talk, Absolutely. talking to um, So Ray, you know, he asked you those questions, um, and, and the reason he's bringing it up is because he's a guy that sold real estate at 17-plus rates. <laughs> so both the products were very important to him to help make those deals happen when he asked about the buy downs and graduated payment products. Um, so, he, you know, highlighting that with you, um, he said he had experience selling homes as you have mm -hmm. when, the, when rates were that high. Um, and this question has come in from Scott and for Keith. Can you go, guys go back to what you were doing on Monday where you were giving your takes on neighborhoods um, around the area? Um, I think people enjoyed that quite a they bit. They enjoyed that. I don't have my laptop in front of me, so that's but <clears throat> that's a struggle. But I can do that while you guys chat. I can go fire up my no, laptop. No, 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 no. That's okay. okay. We can save uh, that for another show. We'll, we'll do that. On, well, we'll do that on Friday. We got Segura coming in you on got Friday. Tad on Friday. <clears throat> tad right? on Friday. To do yeah. that, but we'll we'll save that for next Monday. Okay. So how's the t talk to us about the board of directors? Talk to us about Carr. Talk to us about the agents there. Yeah. I was hyping <laughs> you guys up yesterday. I think people realize why RPs having success. Yeah. They, thank they've you. heard you've had success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so I, I can't talk too much, right, because there's a, an agreement that we all have that, that we can't talk about that. So basically, un unfortunately, uh, the mood today was all about numbers, right? It was all about, okay, what is our, what is our budget going to be, our treasurer reported in, what our, what our dues are going to be. I, I can assure you <clears throat> there was budgeting in that to gain less real estate agents in 2023, you know, so we kind of take that kind of the, the – treasurer and the folks managing the budget uh, has put that in there so you know that's a reasonable expectation so I think the question you're trying to ask me is is everybody uh, thinking oh shift right yeah. and they all are that's what I'm thinking everybody about. everybody's thinking oh shift I think everybody in the industry has got that memo from some time ago um, but I didn't hear any panic you know, I think I think it's something we talk about all the time. You know, I think normalcy is good, balance is good. So I think there was a lot of that conversation around the table, but we were really focused on reviewing line item by line item of budget. So it was long and not too exciting. How about your listing appointments? Yeah, we're doing great. Uh, uh, let me rephrase that. Mrs. Smith is doing great. I mean, you guys are always doing well. Yeah, yeah, we're doing great. We got listing appointments, you know, um, at least the sellers we're talking to, um, they rely on us as trusted advisors to get the market number right, right? So we, you'll, you'll see if you track our listings, very rarely do we do a price reduction, right? Very rarely, um, unless we, that we made a, a, a pretty large mistake. But generally, we will sit down and have a conversation with the, with the seller and, and bring our expertise to the table. And nine times out of ten, they'll listen to us. I mean, nobody wants an overpriced listing. The seller doesn't want it. The market doesn't want it. And then you have to have this uncomfortable conversation. Um, a, a shout out to Michael Guthrie. Um, one of the lines I learned from him that we do in a listing appointment, I, I, you know, A, do I have permission to be honest to, with you? And I'd rather, I'd rather disappoint you now at this is what I think the market is than have to come back and really disappoint you once we're listed and say, look, the market is telling us we're over, overpriced. Are you seeing um, contract cancellations? Not us, no. Okay, and then um, price. That's more. That's more a new construction thing, to be honest with you. And how about price adjustments? That I know not you guys, but yeah. Uh, so we, we talked about that on Monday. I think it did a week over week of three month, two months ago versus versus that. There was actually a re there's a reduction in the last seven days versus that same seven days two months ago of the number of price changes. So again, I think the sellers are getting it. Real estate agents are 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 bringing the information to the sellers. On it, on the end of it, uh, but I'll tell you, uh, we just did a, a, a contract yesterday, I believe it was, um, and we won uh, multiple offer. Nice. We won it because we didn't put um, a seller concessions in the contract. The other ones that we lost against had seller concessions in it. Are you seeing a lot of seller concessions coming in? So. Sky. We're getting it approved. Uh, we're we're getting yeah. We're seeing more seller concessions in contracts than we did you know for the previous two years. Um, but at the same time, t 
to, to speak to the, the strongest contract, and, it, and that's what I offer, and that's what I talk to a lot of buyers about is, look, if you can do this, this is what's going to be your most successful route. Yeah. So that was a, it was a, um, a, a learning session because we needed to talk to the buyer. Um, it's actually cash, right, from our end of it. Um, they do, cash deals do have seller concessions. So part of the reason we, we actually were competing against other, other uh, cash offers, but they were doing seller concessions for whatever reason on that end of it. And I had to explain to the, to the buyer that, that you realize you're offering this less. Right, that took some time to um, to to explain to the buyer, and then they finally finally got it. So, are you seeing a lot of um, how many home sale inspections completely back? Oh yeah, totally, hundred percent, hundred percent back. Are you seeing um, the the seller possessions completely gone? I have, we have not seen that, that. You know, completely gone is a pretty so not that common. Let's say not. That, that's a better choice. Not that kind. Um, I don't know. I've, I, I'm still seeing. Uh, it's a price point thing too, right? So it's a price. So higher end price points. I'm seeing it, and uh, I've, there's. I've seen some other reasons for it, but a lot of it also is if that person selling is trying to go out and have a, a successful offer on the other end, they want some more time in the house in order to, to do that. So yeah, I'm seeing it on the buy side, um, uh, where I'm having to go. Hey, look. You know, we need to adjust the closing date or whatever to keep it inside of 60 days so that we can be compliant to do this and do that. Um, but uh, ultimately, uh, yeah, I'm I'm still seeing it in, uh, in contracts. What about domino deals? Great question. Uh, I don't I don't hear about it unless I hear. Oops. Hey hey, it's there's over. A, there's a problem here. There's a problem there. Um, can you help solve this? That sort of thing. So it's I usually don't know about it until after the fact. So we're seeing that uptick a little bit which to me is really a good thing. So that means that sellers are trying to sell their houses and buy, right? Yeah. Um, but you know, it becomes you know, a skill thing and it's pretty tricky to go ahead and navigate that because not only am I closing Jerry's home, I gotta see how Scott's home is doing in some other state or some other jurisdiction on that because if you fail, right. so it I, impacts that. I hear more like, uh, so Joe and Jane are buying uh, Sally and John's house. Joe and Jane no longer qualify, so the agent that I'm working with is telling their agent, hey, I want these people talking to Scott to see if he can fix the problem or if there's yeah, or what the problem really is. That's where things kind of come back to me. So I don't usually know until there's something else going well, on. Well, and you made the illusion on Monday that there's a lot more of that happening. And in some ways, it's not necessarily a bad thing for guys like you that are talented and it's opportunistic yeah. yeah and you you've been there i mean <clears> but when you, the, don't, the, but you know what hits the fan you want experience navigating the so you know what what i have and what i have seen is you know i just had a conversation this is two weekends ago where um there was a problem but the problem should have been identified like day five yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and it got dragged out all the way until like days before closing and then it's like then the domino effect starts and how does that get solved um you know and which is a benefit uh if you have you know then a buyer that is working you know where i've already we've, you know we've done everything on our end and we're like okay well we can go in and close this and and 15 days so uh, and you get an extension of the contract yeah yeah so so we'll take over and um, you look like a superhero right and then next thing you know you're getting business from it that's that's the goal yeah so, right and that's why these guys are going to do well so, or they are doing well so no longer qualified is talk about that is that happening because that that really didn't happen you that's know. a rates thing right when well yeah i mean so so, so or so they, they've done something or... I mean, it's probably not the credit card bought a car thing. Yeah. Rates moved on that. So if, yeah, if, we're, if a pre-approval goes out and they were like, you know, this is everything has to like check, all the boxes be checked to, to make this work at this tippy top price point that they're trying to hit. And then all of a sudden we see a huge move in rates. Um, that's when all of a sudden these conversations are, and this has happened all year. It started in March and, and uh, here we go where, hey, hey, look, here's where we need to be shopping now. And uh, that's the, I guess, the do not qualify. <clears throat> I, I'm, again, I, I showed up a little late today, but um, are you, are you kind of still holding your prediction on, 
on rates on mortgage rates that we, you've been you've been calling you've been on right yeah on yeah. point so we're is E. F. Hutton right? I think when we're getting Scott some. Speaks. I think we're getting some. Uh, <laughs> That's an I, 80s talked, thing. <laughs> I said there was going to be a lot of volatility. I said I thought that we were at the bottom, but we're, we're you know we're going to see a big spike. I think we're in the middle of a big spike right now. A lot of that's because we got the so the U.S. ten year was at three and a half percent back in late June, early July ish, late June, um, and. We didn't see quite the negative rate impact that we're seeing in the last two days um, at that time because the mortgage-backed securities market was handling it better. The investors were handling it better. They've kind of priced it in, kind of thing, right? Now uh, we're at you know uh, three and an eighth, not quite, and uh, rates are are being dramatically impacted. And I think that has to do with some forecast on where they see the economy going with future jobless claims and that sort of thing. And that, again, that's me speculating. Who knows? It might just be volatility and two days from now things settle down a little bit and we kind of come back to normal. Um, but there's some pain being felt right now for sure. I know a couple of uh, <coughs> doctors of economics that speculate too. So. I was going to yeah. bring up um, Dr. Dr. Yu. Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Yoon. Yeah. Lawrence Yoon. He yeah. was all over the news yesterday. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. the what? National Association of Realtors Chief Economic Eco Economist? Considered one of the top economists in the world. Top five, I believe. I mean, and he had, and, and, and it speaks to your Inman article where like the experts are saying, this is the most confusing market ever. Well, that was where Gary like, Keller said that. Right. In, in Austin. So this, if those who are in the KW, Keller Williams world, this is mega camp week. Uh, uh, I didn't go because we were traveling a little bit too much before, and Jerry would have melted it. Today, have, by the way, I'm yeah, taking another week off. I would have been so upset <laughs> if you had done that. But, I mean, they, they said it's a confusing market. Vanessa, hello, welcome to the yeah, show. Yeah. Because the homeowners have massive equity. Yeah. They can sell their houses. Yeah. But at the same time, people can't buy them. Affordability is an issue. And yeah. we're in a recession yeah. from a sales standpoint. And inflation. And inflation. The the uh, you know hundred percent right you know when somebody like Ga Gary Keller who's been at this, very successful been at it for forty years says I've never seen this before not that I'm in anywhere near the the the, the quality you know the, I'm no Gary Keller right but I haven't seen this in thirty five years right this is the the pieces of the puzzle um, are, are kind of you know it's kind of like it's kind of like you've got a five hundred piece puzzle and you got 400 in it and you can figure out what the picture looks like but you can't finish the puzzle right because you lost the, the hundred pieces of puzzle I, I totally shot that from the hip I we knew what you meant <laughs> on it but that's the thing you know the uh, the market is moving along it's not going backwards but there's pieces of these puzzle that that are missing that we can't really use to in you know to to forecast or crystal ball um thing things out but yeah you know if you read the rest of that article and you kind of track some of this stuff, you know, it it, 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 it keeps on focusing to what we've been talking about for, for quite some time. Trusted advisors, the basics matter, right? In your industry, in my industry, the basics matter. Silly thing like if a client calls, you call them back, right? You know, just simple, basic uh, rules of, of doing business. You know, be professional, be caring, and be trustworthy. And and you will do very well. The the it's what did we look at last year? I think we, we looked at Shilly of Charlottesville let, the last two months versus two months the year before we were ten percent up in value. You know, maybe it might shake out around eight percent at the end of the year. It's still eight percent. Still yeah. a lot of money. It's a pretty decent increase. What do you think there, Scott? So specifically to uh, the the homeowners who have a lot of equity. Um, I think the the targeted point is uh, those in townhouse townhomes who didn't downsize were looking to move up. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, uh, someone uh, in a more rural area who wants to become closer to to town, who's been in the house for three to five years. I think those are your uh, most qualified uh, buyers or sellers than buyers um, because they're going to they're going to be bringing the cash ability to make a good strong offer even though they're home sale contingent and as we see more days on market we see more home sale contingent offers being accepted i think there's a which leads to the domino effect but i think there's a lot of opportunity there we talked about on monday um the, this thing that scared me 
um, about folks using their homes now again as big. He event. put it on our radar first. Scott did. Are we seeing that pick up a little? Because of the, uh, the solicitations yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. coming oh, nonstop. Oh, oh, better believe it. Um, and, and that, that scares I think, the heck out of me. Well, I, well that was my, I mean, that's, that was, I brought it up as far as that scare. I think that's the next domino in like uh, an economic collapse is you have all of this equity. You have these uh, non-traditional mortgage bank companies, uh, the Rockets and others of the world that go in and they're, they offer a product to tap into that because people are starting to care. run more credit card debt. Yeah, they don't, yeah, they don't care. It's um, the reason you want to use a trusted advisor. It's the reason you want to actually talk to a live person. And like as Scott. they drain that equity, five years from now, people who no longer have a parachute and have gotten themselves back in the same trouble that they use the HELOC to get out of, it's, you're, you're going to see a, that's where I see the, the first, that's where I see the first domino fall. Yeah, I'll, I'll get myself into trouble, what I'm about ready to say. I think you should not be allowed to go to get a HELOC mm -hmm. and take a hundred, I know this is not popular, mm -hmm. Take $100,000 of them to go buy a $100,000 boat. If you want to take $100,000 to increase the value of your, your real property. Well, you, could, you could take a HELOC I know that. and pay off your credit cards. There's, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad the thing. The bad thing is, to Scott's point, if you then if get the credit back cards jacked credit. back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But and there's that, nothing wrong with refinancing to pay off some... High, I'm, talk, I'm talking about. I'm debt. talking about going out and buying a brand new. So the, the boat rule is: if you cannot afford two boats, you shouldn't buy one. Boat. I thought the boat rule was. Are we talking about my boat again? <laughs> I'm talking about, you know. You called me up the other day. I thought the boat rule was always be a friend with someone who owns a boat and don't own a boat yourself. But that's part, yes, that's Isn't fine. Isn't that the boat rule? That's he one of them. He called me yesterday. Yeah. Keith has a boat. He called me yesterday and he goes, hey, I heard you're not using your boat so much. Did you use the boat? Oh, did you buy the boat? <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we, Just we, taking temperature, man. Okay, okay there you go. Was taking temperature. Everything is for sale. taking temperature. In the studio at this they network taking over here. temperature. And Yona would say, sell the day boat. The good news, I don't think she's listening. She no. would say <laughs> sell the boat. Keith's not going to sell the boat. You would never sell that boat. Uh, you know what? To be honest with you, I haven't used it in two years. So well, I should. you should sell it to the I man. Should, I should sell it. Sell but, it to the man. But we're he'll, not gonna, he'll take you out. We're not going to sell it because I have unrealistic expectations that I'm actually going to use it next year. You may. You've earned the time. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, I offered him if I if I get it, I, it the engine needs to be certain. I mean, it's Stuff needs to get done to it. I'll take them fishing. Scott, um, what is the uh, the investor rate with good credit at? Ooh, Today, yeah. um, I'm going to say 7.5%. Wow. That's on the top of my head. I haven't actually checked pricing. but And 20%. And 20% down. 20% yeah, yeah. down, 7.5%. That's why you're not seeing these uh, 260 It might not be quite that high, um, but it's, it, it is... Uh, I, I saw a ton of boards yesterday, just, just other people's pricing, and uh, at, at or near seven, well, a seven and a quarter, seven and a quarter is probably close. What's the, what's the threshold where the investor is just going straight cash and saying, the, straight cash, homie? You got to look at Randy uh, Moss. who else, uh, who these investors are. Look at the number of people, look at all the, the marketing and the agents and everything who have said, you know, uh, let's talk to you about this great opportunity and that's I'm not here to to bash that I'm um, but I am saying that the the people who are borrowing to get in the game have a uh, a more difficult time making that property cash flow at this point yeah for sure yeah well that's what we talked about a couple of shows ago I think uh, Johnny Arnalis chimed in yeah on, he said the numbers didn't make sense the numbers just don't make sense it's just you know uh, you which is which is why you're seeing again more these more these yeah. these properties with a lot of deferred maintenance yeah. um, more problems yeah. uh, sit for longer because they're not one the cash investor isn't going in and just scooping them up and trying to turn and flip them because they know that uh, what they're going to have to try to get out of it for, uh, you know, trying to make it make sense is, is the problem right now. To an example for that, I know a couple of folks that actually bought flips, quote unquote flips, about eight months ago, um, actually advised them against it um, and decided to do it, decided to use their cash, 
And the problem is from what they bought it for and what they needed to fix it up for, which always costs more than what you think it's going to cost, on the end of it, they now price themselves out of the market. And they're actually putting them, putting them into rentals. So this is why, and this is the, the traditional view on this, is if you can find something off market through through a networking group sure. or whatever, that's where your best deals are always going to come from, from the investor perspective, rather than, you know, something that... That's why you see our boy, Kyle Miller, hustling on social. Does a great and job. And respect, respect to his game. Yeah. I mean, he hustles. I, I respect his, mm -hmm. his spirit. You yeah, know, so he's always trying to move in shape. But the, but the difference between these folks that I advised against and Kyle, Kyle Miller... Uh, he knows how to renovate a home. Oh, and he's got he's got he, three carpenters and three knows. electricians and three like day labor. He's at, got at, at one point I, he worked with us. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> when we had way 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 back. I when. had no idea. Yeah, yeah, just swinging a swinging a hammer. So he has he has the skill to do that. These other folks, my advice against them after they asked me, "Will you help me do this?" and I said, "I'm sorry, I'm out of that business." Ask you to remodel? Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, I said I can t I can refer you to ISC. I can tell you what to do. I, yeah, no, I, I can, can tell refer you to call. I can tell you who to call. I can call, I tell you to call. Uh, interstate service company and they'll do a great job for you but they wanted to do themselves because they saw dollar sick do dollar signs and and i was right i said whatever you think it is double it and sure so what do they do with that they're going to rent it they're renting it they don't have any choice now the problem is is they borrowed money they put cash into Does it does the and, rent cover the debt service uh i i, I have been not been asked to, to get be involved determined in. yeah. i have been asked to get involved in that so we'll do that so time will tell um so scott you um you know what? I, I feel in positive energy from you. I always feel positive energy from you. Your business is doing well. I'm feeling positive energy. So I'm feeling positive. Now, here's something I, I see interesting. So I always uh, scan the ticker uh, on MS NBC when, when we're up here. And in a testament to how volatile rates are, they're not even running the 30-year that they usually do uh, in, in conjunction with the rest of uh, NASDAQ, U.S. 10-year, 2-year, WTI, Brent, all the every index that they usually show they've pulled the mortgages off today because none of it's not in touch with the reality so and what i mean by that is when i was talking about when the u.s tenure was at three and a half percent mortgage-backed security market was better suited or at least they were more comfortable with where things were and what we've seen in the last two days the investors are all over the place so uh i've seen from broker shops who uh who, who wholesale a lot of them use the same you know you know i, I say that and then 90 percent of them use uwm anyways but uh mortgage rates are are freaking out right now to the point where MSNBC won't run the ticker for what rates are actually running at today. They don't they want to do influence it. it because they don't. So because it's not a real number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. changed five minutes so, later. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, sure. uh, we need to get through Friday's uh, Jackson Hole meeting and see what the so Fed's truly going to do and have everybody like bring the, the the conversation back to a normal level. So my conversation with my clients today, if somebody came in a contract overnight said, hey, here's what we're going to do, I would say, hey, I know that I can't promise you that things are going to get better, but I would not suggest that we lock it right now until we get some more normalcy in the market. Um, and uh, if things change 100 basis points between now and Monday, I'll credit you that and we'll work on it. We'll come up with a solution. So, oh, oh, say, say that slowly. So what... Because that's an important thing what if, you just said. So let's say that if I missed it by a full... Um, uh, like one percent of your cost on a three hundred thousand dollar loan to so three grand, I would I would say, hey, look, I gave you some, I gave you the best advice I could, but it turned out it wasn't good advice. Um, I'm going to help soften this blow, and so we'll, this I'll work is with you on some of that you cost. You need a trusted advisor. Scott's good people because this app that you do, that whoever does to borrow, and you money. don't have to do that. Because no, you would be no, given a consultation not. based on where the market was at that moment. Yeah, but if I give you bad advice, we're, we're going to work on it together. Um, but, you know, at the same I time, I don't huge. think it's bad advice at the moment. I think, right. I think right now things are, if it, it's so volatile that they won't right there uh, and the VIX is freaking out. I mean, I think, uh, I think that uh, today is today's the time to float. Not if that was a bet against you, I wouldn't take it because you've been pretty much spot on. Oh, and, 100%. And even, man does very well <laughs> here. So... Uh, we've started the end of last year. My f concern for the market was inflation. Uh, I, 
how you seen inflation going? Uh, uh, you think you think we're we're we're. I don't we're, think it's there. I think that's what this whole. I, I think that's what this whole. Uh, uh, this I think that's what's driving all this volatility is the fact that everybody thinks we're there and then we're not there, and uh, the Fed's commitment to be more hawkish um, in the right in the raising of interest rates. Uh, short term. Is, short term, uh, you know, uh, is is what we're going to is what we're seeing driving all this volatility. So, so you, you, your overall thing is we're not quite done yet. We're still probably going up a little bit, right? Uh, and you're thinking maybe next year it might come down a little bit. Or? I, I, I'm, I, we're we are going to come down next year, um, and it'll it won't be as steep as what we saw in 2020. Um, I got to tell you, but we shut the whole economy down, and the Fed did some crazy Kelsey stuff. Kelsey says created this, all these is, problems. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Kelsey says, is the refinance process as time consuming as the loan process to buy? No. Um, and while I'm going to say typically no, certainly it can be depending on an individual's specific situation. If you know, it, no is the short answer. No, typically no, it's not going to be. I haven't had a chance to read into it in great depth because I think it's happening yesterday. And uh, uh, But it looks like the Biden administration is trying to do something about Student loan. Oh man, Scott, you're gonna get Scott started. Over no, no, there. no, no. I just, I don't even, I don't, I haven't even read it. I don't even know what they're proposing. Judah, Judah started on this over here. I, I don't even know what they're proposing. They're gonna, they're gonna. Ten grand. Ten grand for uh, income. Under everybody. Income 100, special. One hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. And anybody who makes under one hundred twenty-five. Okay, who's carrying more it's than a flat ten, 10 grand? Off the and top it's of probably going to be in government. So if, if here's where they really probably screw you is if you went and refinanced that out of government held student loan debt into a private loan, you're probably not getting that money back. Um, but in the, anyway, I'm not going to go down this road. So it's only government backed. I don't know what they do. Got it. I don't know okay, I just the reason I bring it up. I don't want to talk about it. Got it. I <laughs> figured he didn't want to talk about this. Um, it's, it's not so a, those Mets are doing really good. Hey, a, it's a hot button. And another another thing that you got to ask is, um, is the ten thousand? Are you going to have to report that as additional income on your taxes once the debt is wiped off your books? I mean, are people considering this? Like, if he's just going to clear ten grand on your student loan debt, is that income? The, the reason I bring it up is is how much. Is student loan debt impacting the loan process now? So ten thousand dollars is, really is fifty dollars to, um, to your total debt to income. So not so for what they're doing isn't that beneficial. That's kind of what I was thinking. I played uh, squash with the first year at um, Darden. I mentioned this to Judah. I'll throw it to you guys. He took out um, two loans for the first year, one year of Darden. And this includes living expenses. Tuition, oh, that's, room and board, that's everything. A big number. What do you think the number is? Forty-five thousand dollars. No, what do you no, think? no, no, no. It's a, it's at least six figures. One hundred seventeen thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Two least. different loans. One hundred seventeen thousand yeah, yeah. dollars. At least six figures. And it's going to go times two. It's a two-year program. He expects to come out two fifty in debt, um, and he's going to make that in seven hundred and fifty dollar payments until it's paid off. It's going to take him forever. It depends. Forever. On you know what the rate is? You so, know what the rate is? Uh, seven percent. Yeah, seven percent. Seven percent. Think about that. Oh, I, so honey, and two uh, documents, by the way. Two, and it's so, took no time at all to get. So most likable twenty-seven-year-old you've ever met, Scott. So here's the deal. He's telling me this story, and I'm like, look, dude. And I didn't want to be the negative Nancy. So what depends on, you know. It, where is he going? What's he, you know? Is he going to yeah. be making three hundred k? He's going to be making. He expects to make that. All right. So he's making three hundred thousand yeah. dollars a year. That seems. And he needs it to get into that job. They there won't you even go. look at him if he doesn't have it. Here's the pr so that I don't mind. But it's a vicious cycle though because well yeah. that I don't mind as much. Here's what I got a problem with. I got a problem with uh, your social worker who has to have a graduate degree, your teacher who has to have a graduate degree. And will never pay it back. And, and these people who are, getting, who are getting pushed six figures into, into debt who are only going to make sixty dollars to $80,000 a year on top, of, and then they got to try to buy a house and do all that. That, 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 that stuff's never so, getting so paid back. It's trash. It's, it, and it's a government-forced problem, um, not, only, not only by uh, the demands of the job requirement, but also for them facilitating the universities <laughs> in scamming people people for this money yeah. well uh, it's what it's, happened it's, was in the time of great, the time of great unpleasantness they, everybody was told to get, go get an education 
right? And it, the price of, but we're having this conversation with our daughter and our son-in-law, right? There, he's he's 500k. Yeah, but he went substantially more. Like the MBA program is two years. How much did your son-in-law have to do? Oh, I think he's been. I think he's been in school since he in, since he was bur right. born. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh my God, twelve. Years. Yeah. So but, if you're going to be, a, still, a, if you're a doctor that specializes, you're going to be three to five hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt. And the tough thing is, is he's not going to earn immediately. We're like this. This guy, this twenty-seven year old. I'm not obviously going to say his name. He's going to earn in two years. Like he does this for two years, goes two hundred thirty-four, call it two hundred fifty k in debt, and then he starts off three hundred. Yeah, so since I know a little bit about real estate and I know a little bit about national real estate and, and all this stuff, we are having this conversation. That's part of what we did out west with our daughter and our son-in-law. And to your point, our daughter is a teacher, right? Master's required, master's degree. Um, she's got like maybe 40000 or something like Scam. that. Scam. Left. Um, and uh, the... The, the reality of it is is they're going to come out of where they are uh, you know with nearly six figures uh, excuse me the nearly 600 grand in debt and the conversation we're having about we're looking where they're going to go is is a where can they get the most money and the cost of housing is the least the cost of living is the least so they can start eating eating that away where if, if you're saying you know, where they have the highest earning potential the cost of living is the greatest lowest. No, no highest, they're, highest, trying, they're earning, trying to thread the Highest earning potential is the lowest cost of living. No, highest, yeah. highest earning, lowest cost of living. Where is that? Where is that? Where, where you know, that? I understand that. But if you go to the highest earning potential areas, your cost of living typically is, is typically the highest. And you're just yeah. chasing. You're not you're catching, chasing it. You're not catching right, up. You're so what we're having a, you know, trusted advisor conversations is looking at a three, four, five year stop gap. Where, is, where you can get as much money as you can, but your cost of living is here, so you can start eating away at this six hundred thousand dollars because it just that's keeps, the nut. Oh yeah, it's, it's five. It, it's I rounded it up. It's five and it's five forty to be exact, somewhere um, around there. Paul McCarter one hundred percent agrees with Scott's take on the racket um, pushing higher education or pushing uh, degrees, expensive degrees that. Don't translate to ROI. Well, you never used to need that in teaching, right? You didn't never needed a master's degree. You just needed a basic. Like, I, think it, I think, Paul, your wife is a, a counselor, right? <clears throat> I believe she's a counselor. She says there's so many professions. He says there's so many professions where the degree doesn't make you better at the job, but it's forced upon you. And That's what your point was. I, yeah, I, I've, I'll soapbox this thing till you know, for you know, another hour and 20 minutes. But, um, I mean... Part of it uh, is that part of it is uh, they enabled these universities to go out and uh, have the endowments that they have, be these huge property owners. The University of Texas is about to overtake Harvard for being the richest university in America. Why? Because they, they purchased oil fields and they're still enabled by government money to go in and charge what they charge uh, as far as... Uh, Tuition and boarding goes, and it's an absolute we'll take it 100 and, and all this discussion. Scam. We'll do it locally. We'll do it locally. The the I was trying not to bash the University of Virginia, but yeah. they deserve it just as much as everybody. They're, else. they're purchasing land left and right and not paying taxes on it. Scam. Well, that, that, that's a, that's half. That's a maybe yes, maybe no. Yes, it depends if the foundation. Yeah. Is, the foundation is buying it. They're paying taxes for it. The university is buying it, then they are not. They're not. And you don't think one of the most prestigious law schools in, in the in the United States of America has basically backdoored and set up oh, every no single thing that they can to protect them inside Look of this? Look you. Of course. <laughs> Scam. 100%. 100%. 100%. Okay. So, how about the Mets, guys? <laughs> I mean, I appreciate his passion. Yeah, yeah. It's something that needs to come out. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, but, but they... they they tend to move it from the from the university to the foundation, so we do. They do pay taxes, and oh by the way, when they move it to the foundation, they have to apply, they have to, zoning laws apply, so forth and so on. When it's owned by the by the university, which Kevin, is the state. They don't. Uh, Scott's comments are resonating with a lot of people. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are agreeing here. Yancey is saying, if you want to make healthcare cheaper, make healthcare education cheaper, oh, yeah. which is true. I mean, if you're going to have doctors that are 600k. And well, he's five, but yeah. yeah. 
It, it's, make healthcare education cheaper. Yeah, That'll make yeah. healthcare cheaper. It, it's it's a it, it's. Um, a, I mean, there's a bit of an insurance problem as well that profits billions and billions of dollars and backs and denying people actual. That's coverage. why I love what Mark Cuban's doing with that pharmacy idea, where he's only charging a 15 percent markup on the drugs. The yeah. Mark Cuban pharmacy, it's brilliant. Um, she, <clears throat> Cuban, Cuban trying to flip the pharmacy model on its head. And Paul's wife is a social worker by trade, usually on the top of the list for the least profitable degree that's out sure. there. Um, but she makes a hugely, hugely positive impact, though. Paul. It's a passion. It's without a doubt, passion. Without doubt. Yeah. God bless him. Yeah, exactly. But, but we're, we're having this discussion, and guess what we need? Plumbers, electricians, HVAC. I mean, that's not going to happen anytime soon. And he did a sizzle reel that I got, I got some feedback from uh, at the dinner table. Uh, since a reel that my yeah. wife watched of Scott's about subsidizing the small builder, and she's like, he's right. Yeah. The one that we just published a few days ago. Um, so I don't see that problem being fixed anytime soon. No, so we're, so it's we're 10 years behind the curve on having that problem even, like, begin to be fixed. Uh, so uh, it, what I'm trying to point, I'm trying to make, is compounded, right? Mm -hmm. So you have all these people going to school with all this huge debt. Plus, we don't have enough. We, you can't just pivot from that and say, "I'm going to be a plumber or, or the plumber." Oh, it's no. just, it's just well, right. Because and and that goes back to the actually the point taken inside of the, or part of the point taken inside of that reel is the people that come into these entry level skill trade positions, they don't show up with a plan. They weren't like, "Hey, man, I've been to school to do this," because they're probably already connected to someone um, in some fashion uh, who said, here, go do this. And Their, here's uncle's where, a plumber. Their uncle's a plumber. Yeah. They, 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 they get connected in. They walk in the door, no driver's license, no nothing, saying, hey, dude, I will be a hard worker. Help me. And you're trying to hope that you can turn this person, that you can grow them into sure. that, that, that skilled trade over time. So it becomes the small business owner's responsibility to then – Create raise them. To raise, raise them. them. I, I know. I've been there and done that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been that delinquent. I understand. You know. You know. I know what it's like. Yeah. I, I, you know that whole foundation block story keeps running through my head. <laughs> I was like, good story. About this is. A I'm like, oh my god. How much more of that? Microcosm <laughs> for the healthcare issues. Viagra is covered 100 percent, but insulin covered 50 percent. What's wrong with that picture? Oh yeah. Just yeah. put on the feed right Yeah, there. well, it's a family show, so we'll, we'll leave. I mean, but it's a, it's a oh, great yeah. call. Oh, it's yeah. a great call. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, uh, you brought it today. You brought it today. What do you say to the folks that subsidizing always raises prices? Because that's being put on the feed. It depends on how you subsidize it, right? I, part, so in that uh, in that take, I said this goes against everything I politically believe in. Yeah, because um, I, 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 I don't disagree with the fact that subsidizing always raises prices, um, but I think it's worth a study to figure out where the raise potentially goes if the goal is to continue. If the goal is to continue to put out housing to keep inventory uh, attainable at the at or near the bottom end. All right, so the, the, in the fact that subsidizing always raises prices, so what you're going to get is builders who do uh, what I took from, you took from that 15-second reel or three-minute reel, whatever it was, uh, that then take the money and inflate the price, but it needs to be pushed towards skilled labor and... <clears throat> someone smarter than me needs to vet this, but I'm telling you, if the government's going to get involved in housing, that, at least at some stage, is the best way for them to do it. What about a subsidy for, for growing the vocational programs, right? When I was in high school, you know, the vocational programs are there. If you don't want me so, to uh, No, no, no. I agree with you there, but that's... Uh, that is what... That's how we got into this uh, six-figure uh, collegiate cost and that'll somehow trickle into trades the same way that uh, we have I, I agree that it's not a perfect answer so so my nephew in Vienna Austria when he was in high school he took the, the, the vocational and in Europe their vocational system is, is, is par excellence when and it, and it actually walked out of high school with, with basically a two year degree but he was he's a diesel mechanic right and he's living in Germany right now, making six figures, you know, 
you know, it's it's cons it's it's very respected profession, right? On on this end of it, and it started at the school level. Again, oh, I we've got a we've got a technician shortage in America in the automotive industry that is a shortage 20, everywhere. Twenty years. We, we can't making. even find somebody to teach a K Tech class. And now the problem you have with uh, the electric vehicle that's being pushed Different mechanic. is you you've got an entire skill set of people who are, are gasoline and diesel who then are, are having to relearn and readjust when one of their biggest problems is diagnosing electrical issues and then you have no one, no one trained at a vocational level to come in and diagnose and work on these vehicles. It's, it's, a, we, it, <laughs> it's a huge problem. Well, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, you're 100% right. We are in the market for an electric vehicle and probably not going to get one because of that reason at that end of it. But I think Tad's on, on, on Friday is going to talk me into it. Uh, so what you're going to see from a uh, manufacturer... From a manufacturer aspect, they're going to stop repairing and we'll start replacing it, and it'll be uh, uh, so warranty and all these problems will nobody's going to push you to it. Nobody's going to fix anything. They're just going to say, "All right, well, it needs a new one of X," and they just take out that and then throw a whole thing. It's in funny you should say that. I have a, a buddy of mine that has. A, I'll leave the brand out of it. An electric vehicle hasn't been working right, and they literally just said, "You know what? Pull out." old computer put in new computer and, and it's, it's going to be the only way because they're never going to have technicians who are going to be able to diagnose their problems i love it i love it keith smith and scott morris on a wednesday plans for friday tell us about it yeah um, so I'm, I'm excited about it uh, we're gonna have segura in the house and uh that oh, i don't know much about it but there's apparently a couple of big announcements coming from the company some new product lines so i'm excited to hear that um i want to kind of do a little live uh Hey, so, you know, tell me how I get solar on my house and what's the benefit? You know, we talked a little bit about inflation. Is there any benefit there? And what's your, you know, what does the program look like? So I'm just super excited about, about getting them in here. I mean, we always have a ton of fun when, when Tad's, Tad's here. Scott Morris, how can people reach you? Um, you can find me on them interwebs. Uh, Google Scott Morris Mortgage and I will pop up and tons of great reviews. Uh, you can, you know, my, my, the number that you see listed is my cell. Don't hesitate to text, call, email, smoke signal, whatever you got to do. <laughs> He's on social media everywhere. You have great reviews. You have basically a 5-0, five stars, and 68 reviews. That's legitimate. So when you have that many reviews and that kind of rating... You know you're doing something right. Scott Morris of Ross Mortgage. Keith Smith of Yes Realty Partners. Judah Wickower of just great, the great man company. behind the scenes. Great company called I Love Seal. The Incredible Oz. Uh, my name is Jerry Miller. Look, look at that laugh. I love Judah. He's been doing great. He's really been, uh, I've been, I mean, he's been blossoming. Yeah, the noon shows you guys You've are been doing, doing great. so great, Judah. It's just been like the, the butterfly, the caterpillar transformation over here. I've, I've got like, somebody who's going to come on in a couple weeks uh, against her will in place of me, uh, and she's going to kill it. She doesn't know it yet. She's Who is it? Kill it. Tova Payne. Okay. Uh, she's, she's licensed. She's on the team. Yeah. Uh, she's super excited if she's listening to this. You're coming on. Get ready. That's right. Um, all right, guys. That's the show. It's archived. At realtalkwithkeithsmith.com, realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Click the Partners tab and check out the, uh, the partners that are just the trusted names in real estate. The I Love Siebel Show is up in one hour, and it's going to be a doozy. Thank you kindly for joining us. Take care. A doozy. I love the doozy. Great word. Nicely done, gentlemen. Thank you for your understanding of me showing up lately.